what I do want to do is, is make sure that we tie together what you heard from, from Dan and Laura. And I think one of the most important things that I could tell you is the goal isn't a particular street or the goal isn't a particular plan to be developed. The goal is, so the outcome goal is to have a better place to live, a competitive place to live. Because at the end of the day, all of our cities are really competing to be viable. And, that, and that's what's important. And everything is relative. While you may not feel your city is fantastic, as long as it's better than every other city in your region, people will come to you and you'll have economic vitality. And so it, it sometimes it, it really does help to get out of your own jurisdiction and hear what other people are doing to kind of validate what's happening in your own area. Because if you're like we are here, you're constantly getting beaten up for everything. And so it feels good to know that actually what you do it is good work. Just so I understand, how many people in here are municipal or state planners? Okay, so most of you then in the room do have to deal with elected bodies to ultimately get your plans approved. And that's, that's a bit of a nuance that's different than private sector. So when we talk about places in Charlotte, uh, Dan and Laura and I have spent a lot of time looking at parts of our town that were not developed in the way we've just discussed. And in fact, there really isn't much infrastructure. And there really isn't much place. And the challenge we have is, how do you go back in and fix this myriad of issues, infrastructure issues? It's going to be hugely costly for us. But we have to do that, otherwise we're just going to write off subdivisions, I'll call them subdivisions and not neighborhoods, but subdivision after subdivision in a large swath of our city. So one message is don't allow your community to get there in the first place. But when you get there, what is it that you need to do to bring it back? And when I was an elected official, I constantly had debates and discussions with the development community when they said, well, Pat, you want, you're requiring sidewalks, that's going to cost money. And I said, yes, it is. But let's not confuse an argument of cost with an argument of value. And a lot of the pictures that Dan showed in East Boulevard are part of a, a Dilworth. That's a, a neighborhood in Charlotte. It's the first suburb of Charlotte. And it's interesting to think of it as a suburb. Dan lives there. I live there. It's uh, two miles away from where we sit here. The streetcar used to service that. So it was at a time, the turn of the previous century, 1900, that it was serviced by streetcar, horses, pedestrian, not a lot of vehicles. And, and we now, a hundred and some odd years later, benefit from that style of development because there are sidewalks, there are connections, there are, I counted, eight or nine ways for me to get from my house out of the neighborhood. Dan showed you a picture of some of the neighborhoods that were built probably in the 60s and 70s and 80s where people, three, four, five hundred home developments have one way to get out. And, and that doesn't bode well uh, for congestion of traffic, ability for people to, to move. It's just, it's very problematic. So uh, connectivity is important. Also, what's, what we need to know is that quality of life is different for everybody. Again, this back to this relative thing. Uh, change affects people. There are people in Charlotte, been here for generations. They don't like all of the people that are moving here. Sometimes they really don't like the people. They don't like the concept of people moving into Charlotte, of the density. But that's a reality that's going to occur. So if you all are from communities that are growing like Charlotte, we're in this transition period. We're not an urban center like New York or Chicago, or even LA for that matter. We, we are a new city when it comes to urbanization. And so we're going to be that way for another couple of decades. There'll be a political debate on every project. Literally, it comes up with rezonings. There'll be a debate about how you use money, resources. We saw some of the political cartoons on we don't need to spend money on roads, uh, or we need spending on roads, not on bicycles, forget pedestrian. Well, at the end of the day, you all know this. It's all of those things that make a good city. So you have to build a compelling argument, and oftentimes there has to be the financial argument, and that gets to economic development. So companies, we all want to attract new companies. We want to retain companies and have them grow. We want entrepreneurs here in Charlotte, first of all, to be recognized. They are here, but most people don't know that. 
Um, entrepreneurs think differently than people did in the 60s that wanted that kind of environment. What are we doing to accommodate everybody? That, that's the trick here. We have to accommodate the people that want to live in the suburbs and the new people that are entrepreneurial in spirit, that are going to grow companies here. They want an urban environment. They're bicyclists. How many bicyclists are in the crowd here today? Great, a lot of bikes. I ride a bike to work. I put in about 150 miles on a good week, a week riding, not always to work, and that's a very nominal amount of those miles. But those of you that cycle, you know the best way to understand planning on the ground is riding a bicycle with thin tires. You know every pothole, and potholes can be that big. That'll blow your tire out. Uh, and you really get a feel and a sense for an intersection, how it works. You get a sense for sidewalks and parking and how close parking is to the, the bike lane. And that's important. I studied architecture and construction management, so I have the right side of my brain wants to plan and design, but I also have the other side that really wants to figure out how do you practically get it done. And, and we can't lose sight of that in the planning field. We need to make sure that we're practical, too. No idea what was on that slide, so I'll go to the next one. Um, probably covered some of this. So w when we think about, uh, in our department, we're about neighborhoods, economic development, that small business to big business. Uh, Siemens came to town a few years ago, um, built out and expanded a, a huge operation down in southwest Charlotte. Uh, it's really an amazing plant. You're going to want to go through and see big toys and big things being built. They're building um, gas turbines in this facility. So that's great from a job standpoint for us. But you think about transporting gas turbines on rail and trucks. So there has to be infrastructure to accommodate that. But when I get out of downtown and ride, a lot of times I'm riding right by that plant because the road actually is pretty good down there. And so how do we mix the need for moving product, moving commerce, manufacturing with this notion of complete streets? Some people may think that doesn't go together, but East Boulevard, Dan showed you the picture of that. We do have commerce up and down East Boulevard all day long. A lot of it is to support those businesses. But you saw in those pictures that restaurants are expanding to the outside. There are patios. People come from large, long distances in Charlotte to East Boulevard because there's something about that feel. That drives the economy for us. So it's, Siemens plants manufacturing all the way down to the small restaurant. All of that is impacted by design and access in the feel of places. The last point here is collaborating. Um, we we'd actually do work very well together as a city from transit, that's our rail and buses, to transportation with Dan's group, to planning. As I understand it, that's often unique in cities. Sometimes those two groups not only don't speak, but they really don't want to speak to each other. It's imperative that everybody come together, not only so that a plan works, but so that when you go to the elected body to ask for funding, it's really clearly articulated the benefit that's coming. And it can't just be, again, the transportation benefit or the economic development benefit. It has to be the fact that 10 years from now, this will all pay off because it's been well thought out. So I mentioned I ride a bike to work. Uh, Jamie Banks, my colleague, is here making sure I don't say anything really out of line. But she uh, helped me get a camera on my helmet. So I thought, well, I'm going to speak to you guys. Why not film a way that I don't always ride home but can ride from downtown uh, back through some of the pictures that you've seen into the neighborhood? And I think, all right, so here's an, here's an overall. You can see downtown. And this is the Little Sugar Creek Greenway. I will ride on some of that. Dan's telling me to mash a button. All right, there we go. So Metropolitan is a development that was done in a public-private partnership with the city of Charlotte about six, seven years ago. It was an old uh, urban shopping mall slash center. It had outlived its, its useful life, and it sat just doing nothing for a long time. A lot of the surface parking actually covered over the Little Sugar Creek Greenway. So that was all broken up, pulled out, uh, torn down. A new development came in, a mixed-use development. The city's supporting it with some capital dollars, the county. It was in conjunction with the county who does the Greenway system. 
and you'll see some of that. This was really the, the beginning of that network. You'll also see when I'm tooling down the, the path on my bike, I kind of turned my head. I hope you don't get sick. I don't think I did it too quickly. But you'll see some buildings that were built to respect the back side of the building in the greenway because people could raise their rent rates because that was the view and that was the access. So there really is an economic development component. But I'll tell you, it's curious to me, people with this greenway have said when they lived on it, oh, we, we don't want that greenway. And I would ask them, what do you mean you don't want the greenway? Well, that's where essentially they're saying that's where people are going to come steal my flat screen TV and they're going to run away that way. And I'm thinking that really doesn't sound plausible, but that is the, that's sort of the fear that people have. You have to be able to gut it out and get these things built and see that people really aren't walking down the greenway with your flat screen TV. And in fact, when more people are walking back and forth, it puts the proverbial eyes on things. But again, planning, it looks great. Getting it done is tough. So play video, I need to probably do what? It's not moving. Oh, there it is. I'm ready. Let's do it. Yeah. So what I wanted to show is this is going right out of downtown. I wanted to be able to show uh, the streets without a bike lane, which obviously this is. If I go up to this, will that not do it? Yeah. It's not doing it. All right. So uh, we're actually going by where we are today. Where we are right now is off to the left. But the point to this video is that we don't have, while we say we have complete streets, we have sections of complete streets. We, and what we need to figure out how to do over the next decade is knit all of these sections together. It, it's great when you're riding a bike and all of a sudden you come upon a bike lane and my cycling buddies always give me great credit for that. I had really nothing to do with it. But so you ride about three blocks and all of a sudden you're back into a regular street. Um, it, it's important for us to realize that Every little bit counts. Everything that you do counts and helps. And ultimately, you're going to build this thing out. But you have to get the political folks to realize, I think you just saw me looking to the left so I didn't get run over. Uh, we're going to go, I'm going to go onto a street here that has a bike lane. So you'll see the, the difference there. But those of you that deal with folks in the political arena, you need to give them all the tools possible to support your efforts. And it's difficult for a lot of folks in elected office to raise their hand today for something that's going to give benefit a decade down the road. We live in a society where we want immediate gratification and someone's going to say, how dare you spend my tax dollar on that thing? Well, if people could step back and understand it, that thing is really going to bring value to their home because it brings value to the whole community. Uh, I wish I had a real easy answer to how we get elected officials to think more broadly, but uh, it, it, it's, it, we've lost that at the national level, state level, it's hard, and now it's bleeding over to the local level. I don't know what your experience is, is but your experiences are, but we're finding that here. It's a challenge to take these good plans and help people see the broader benefit that, that they have for our community. So this is the Metropolitan. This is all new within the last five years residences, uh, restaurants, commercial development, some office as well. I'm about to turn on to the Greenway. I won't hit that. Looks like I'm going to hit it. Uh, and across the way is, um, to the right, I'm sorry, is the Little Sugar Creek Greenway. So it is not a raging river. It is basically raging when it rains, and then it's really kind of a slow trickle. But the idea of water and the idea of the calmness and being back to nature is really intriguing to people. This is a heavily used greenway, and it has, it has inspired a great deal of development clearly here, but you'll start to see it along the way as well. It has, it has added to the economic vitality of our community. All right, pick up the pace, Pat. Ride faster. I actually uh, did this one time before, and I was seated the whole time, and it was really bumpy, so I was standing most of this time and trying to go slowly. 
Um, this is one of the best examples we have in Charlotte of the city and the county coming together. While it seems obvious that two organizations that have multiple uh, responsibilities in the community would work together well, uh, that has not historically been the case. It's a little bit embarrassing. We now finally do meet with the county on a regular basis, not just about parks, but uh, also about housing and other things. You can see this building on the right was really built uh, to, to look over the Greenway. Uh, unfortunately, that developer, given the economy, has hit really hard times, but I would argue that the rent rates in that building are going to be much higher than any other building on the other side of the street that it faces because of the Greenway. I think I'm done. I told you I wasn't going to repeat what you guys said. So, anyway, this there's that building again. You, are, are you all? Are they going down the Greenway? Or there's a number of tours that will okay. take people down the Greenway, but not everyone's going. Okay. Well, you've done the Greenway now. Um, it's actually nicer in person. I, I, go, I don't know if it goes all the way through, Jamie. Do we go all the way through and into the park and into the neighborhood? All right. Well, how about we do this? We do the question and answer. You can have this rolling. But it goes, the Greenway ends up at Freedom Park, which is a, a, a large, almost regional park. It's a very big park uh, on East Boulevard that Dan mentioned. And from there, I go back into a neighborhood. So you get a feel for the context of what complete streets, what uh, development a hundred years ago was like what we're all trying to get back to. 